plasticity. So this side Himanshu and I'm going to discuss with you for the lecture number three. So, so far we have done the two lectures on the electricity and uh, what we have learned in those two lectures is very interesting. That was something new. So you guys had a discussion about the Ohm's law in the previous lecture, which was telling you about the flow of current and it was connecting with the potential difference. So what we have learned is basically that if the charge comes into the motion, then it generates electricity. And with the help of that electricity, now we can uh, glow the bulbs and so many things. Okay. So basically in the last two lectures, it was a very basic introduction part. And uh, the main idea which we have got is that whenever you connect this appliance bulb or it can be anything with the help of few connecting wires with the battery, then that battery will make those electrons to flow in a particular path. And with the help of that particular path, we get electric current. And hence, we can see the bulb will start glowing, glowing and all. Now, in today's lecture, I am going to use the Ohm's law only. And with the help of that Ohm's law, I am going to show you that uh, how we can use this battery and uh, connecting wires in our day to day life. And how does it help us? So, actually, we have seen that in our household supply, if you see, then uh, there are many appliances which are connected. Tube light is there, fan is there, then you are using laptop. So laptop charger you are connecting, many power switches are there, refrigerator, washing machine. So actually guys, many things we are using. So how we are connecting them? So what is the connection? How do we join all these things? And how do we make sure that if one is switched off, still the second one can be switched on? Right, so what, what makes it possible? So that simple idea you'll be getting from today's session. So what I am going to discuss with you in today's session is following. Series combination of resistors and parallel combination of resistors. So series, as you are guessing, I guess uh, it's something like uh, in the same line. Yes, for now you can say like that. And later on, you'll get the better definition about the series combination. Then second part, which I'm going to discuss with you is about the parallel combination of resistors. Now in the parallel combination of resistors, we'll be discussing about the uh, very important thing which we use in our day-to-day -day life also. So this is a very important circuit, parallel circuit. We all are surrounded with the in parallel circuits, right? In most of the cases. So it's very important thing. So we will be trying to learn the basics of the series and parallel combination. And then in the next class, we will see the more complicated circuits. So what is a circuit? Basically, a circuit is a, uh, is a thing which is connecting all the batteries, ammeter, voltmeter, the resistances, these connecting wires. So this entire thing is called a circuit. So we are going to deal with some special cases now. And yes, this topic is very important for your 10th grade board exam as well. Because in the 10th grade board exam, they are going to ask you a numerical question from here. So we have to be very strong hold over this topic if you are not if you are feeling very scared from this and if you do not get good marks in this then you can expect there will be a loss of around four to five marks for your board exam because in board exam cbsc has repetitively asked one question based on this so you can expect one question of four to five marks from here so that's why guys please very uh, be very attentive during this lecture and if you don't understand anything the PDF is always there and I am always there. So you can ask me or you can ask, put it on the PDF, right? So we should not have any confusion at the end of the lecture about the series and parallel combination. And yeah, one more important thing, this lecture will not be enough because I do not say this uh, every time because many topics are theoretical. So if you just uh, take the lecture and then if you revise it yourself, it would help you. But the main problem comes about those topics in which we have numericals possibility. So this is one of the example for that. In this particular topic, we'll be having only and only numericals. Theoretical questions are very less. So I would suggest you that after this session, you guys must solve every, at least 10 to 12 problems of series combination and 10 to 12 problems of parallel combination. And then only you will be getting the confidence. So just this lecture is not going to help you. 
your self study would also play a very important role here because every time you will be dealing with a new situation a new kind of circuit diagram so we should not be get getting scared of it we have to deal with it that how to solve such complicated circuits how to simplify them so i think we can begin now right i have given you too many warnings too many disclaimers so now let's begin with our lecture number 3 the series and parallel combination of resistors okay so here we start first is the series combination now what is the meaning of series combination let us see so this example you can see on the right hand side is a series combination here you can see this is the <clears throat> battery of voltage v and let me say this is the positive end of the battery and that's the negative end of the battery so as you can see this dot you can assume that that's a direction of conventional current all right though the electron would be in the opposite direction you know that very well conventional current uh, which we uh, show in the circuit diagram in that actually the electrons are moving in a opposite direction so this dot dot you can see that's showing the direction of current so suppose that's a positive end of the battery so current would start from here let's say some current i is going out of the battery now how do we define current so current is basically defined as the total charge flowing through a given area divided by total time it has taken so suppose if somebody takes a particular cross section of the wire and now if you measure that let's say in one second total 1000 electrons have passed from here so from there you will be finding the current as total charge flown which is 1000 electrons so one electron charge you multiply with 1000 multiplied 1.6 multiplied 10 to the power minus 19 divided by time that's how you find out the current okay so if i am saying that i current is flowing from the battery then some number of electrons will be there let's take for example 100 electrons are coming out of the battery now all those 100 electrons okay do not get confused i'm just taking an analogy here right or if you are getting confused with the motion of electrons and the current direction let me just take the 100 charged particles let me just say that you must remember that charge is motion of electron and current direction is just opposite so suppose let's say 100 charged particles are coming out from the battery positive charged particles now what all these 100 charged particles will do they will move why they will move because there is a battery the potential difference will force will 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 make them to move in a circuit they will move here now from the resistor one how many electrons flow 100 because all of them would have a single path suppose if there is only one street then you do not have any other path possible you can take only one way you can go straight yeah you cannot go this side you can go this side right so you, the only possible way for you is the straight path so all these 100 electrons would go from here similarly all these 100 charged particle will go from here and similarly all these 100 charged particles will go from here same time because all the electrons all the charged particles are flowing continuously because of this battery so actually what i would say that uh, in this case if you look at any one of the resistor then you would find that equal number of charged particles are flowing they would not stop anywhere charge cannot accumulate anywhere because the battery is there battery will make them to flow will make them to come into the motion so all these 100 charged particle will flow through the circuit now when they are flowing through the circuit then if you look at any of the resistor in this case particular case the number of charged particles flowing per second is same because there is no other way possible if i do the branching then there is a possibility if these 100 charged particles are coming like this if i do some branching here then there is a possibility that only 20 will pass from here and 80 will go from here depending upon the resistances so right now there is no such thing as so all the charged particles are bound to move along a single path single wire right hence if number of charged particles flowing per second is same so charged particle cannot accumulate anywhere so this current i1 i2 and i3 would be exactly same 
there would not be any difference between them because number of charged particle flowing per second so that's how you should remember the definition of series combination of circuits you must not say that series combination means that uh, everything is standing in a queue right we are right now we are in a physics class so there would be some significance to it <clears throat> so here the significance is series combination is basically representing that the current throughout the resistors remains same so that's what the meaning of series combination all right now i am going to show you what my target here in today's class is i am going to simplify these circuits for you so suppose if you want to replace this entire circuit this bigger circuit you can see so if i basically want to replace this entire circuit this again big circuit with a very small circuit then what would be the value of resistance in that small circuit so actually my target is i want to replace the entire thing with this r equivalent again that battery and like this so that's what my purpose is just similarly as we have done in the case of lenses so there i explained you that power of a lens is p1 plus p2 plus p3 like that so basically what it was telling you it was telling you that sorry <clears throat> it was telling you that if you take those many lenses of power p1 p2 p3 p4 p5 or you take a single lens whose power is p1 plus p2 plus p3 plus p4 plus p5 that is exactly same does not make any difference so that is called the equivalent lens similarly here also i want to replace this entire big thing this entire big thing in a very small diagram with a single resistor what should be the value of that single resistors that is known as the equivalent resistance of the circuit or you can simply say the total resistance of the circuit so resistor network the individual resistor add together to give an equivalent resistance here so now in this case what would be the equivalent resistance is the addition of all the resistors now how it is possible so let us talk about it now so let me begin with the derivation part so first of all let us take three resistors and then i'm going to show you how it is the equivalent resistance equal to addition of all three so this is let's say r1 this is let's say r2 this is let's say r3 and that's the battery i have connected here so current would flow in this way and now i don't need to explain you again that why the current must be same from here from here or from here from everywhere the total current would be same now if the current is same from everywhere now let us write down the potential difference across every resistor from across the resistor 1 what is the potential difference across the resistor 2 what is the potential difference and across the resistor 3 what is the potential difference so total potential is v right and that total potential v is getting divided among r1 r2 and r3 and what is my purpose we must not forget that we want to replace this entire big circuit into the smaller circuit r equivalent this way so current would be i only here okay so for this circuit i can simply write v is equal to ir ohms law okay now here i can say that total voltage which i had v some part of it going along v1 some part of it is going along v2 and some part of it is going along v3 so total voltage must be same you will get a better idea about it even more uh, conceptual idea about it in the next class which is based on the kirchhoff laws that's the 11th grade to 12th grade topic but we'll have a little idea about it in the 10th grade itself so what i can write about v v is nothing but i multiplied r equivalent from here what i can say about v1 current is same ir1 this is ir2 and this is ir3 so total equivalent resistance will be how much i will get cancel out from every term so r1 plus r2 plus r3 that's it that's all 
So total equivalent resistance in this case we are getting is about R one plus R two plus R three. So in short, what I can say that whenever we get the series combination of circuits, we don't need to get confused about it. Simply, if you find that these three resistors are in series combination, then just replace them with a single resistor whose resistance is R one plus R two plus R three. Let's say for example. I have a two ohm resistor. I have a three ohm resistor, and I do have one five ohm resistor. And let's say I have connected them by a battery of voltage hundred volt. So current would flow from the positive terminal to the low negative terminal. Now this circuit. i know it's a series circuit there is no branching i can see so this entire thing i can replace with a single circuit so i can write down in a short form that this can be replaced with a single circuit whose resistance is 2 plus 3 plus 5 sum of all three so total is 10 10 ohm so what is the value of current it will be by ohms law i is equal to v by r equivalent So hundred by R equivalent, which is how much? Ten. So answer we are getting is ten ampere because current unit is ampere. So that's it. It's that simple. So that's how basically we use a series combination of circuits. So now I hope you understood why this equation is written over here. Now the important part is in the series combination of circuits. Once the current becomes zero. Through any of the resistor, let's say through this resistor, current becomes zero suddenly. Then automatically, through all the resistors, the current will become zero. This will go, and this will be off. All three bulbs will be off. So if any of the bulb goes down, all other bulbs will go down. So that's why we must not use a series combination of uh, appliances in our day in our household circuits. because we do not want that only tube light remains on or only uh, fan remains on or we do not want that at the same time both tube light and fan is on because there is a requirement that only you want to switch on the fan or there is a requirement that you only want to switch on the tube light right so in the winter season if you have connected that tube light and fan in a uh, series combination then what will happen once you will switch on the circuit then fan will also start at the same time along with this tube light so i hope you won't like that in the winter season so that is why it is recommended that we should not use a series combination if we have a such kind of requirement where we do not want to use all the appliances in one go so that is why we must use the some other technology right so that i'll tell you just now after this which is known as the parallel combination of circuits so now what is a parallel combination of circuits let us begin okay so this these are the decorating lights christmas diwali time you must be using it so you can see all these leds are connected in the series combination right so if you switch off the one button all the leds will go, will be going off so it is not like one switch off then only one led is going off this one this one this one all of them are connected in series so they all will go off at the same time because current becomes zero through one of them it will become zero from the entire circuit that's it so that's the basic idea about the series combination of resistors and now let us go ahead with the parallel combination of resistors so let's say that's a battery and current would go in the and in the clockwise sense so higher to lower terminal now here you must realize if let's say 100 electrons are starting from here Or hundred charged particles are starting from here. Then these hundred charged particles, when they will reach at this location, that's the junction. So when they reach at the junction, what they will find? They will find that we can take three paths. Few charged particle can go along this, which is I one. Few charged particle can go along this, which is I two. Few charged particle can go along this, which is I three. 
So we do have the three possibilities. So either you can take I1 or you can take I2 or you can take I3. So now the point is these total charged particles were coming, let's say 100. And now 20 has taken this path, 40 has taken this path and 40 has taken this path. So ultimately the total number of charged particles will be same. So what I'm saying is that total current which started from one side, I, from the battery will be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. Right? So basically in the parallel combination, current is not same. That was in the series combination. Here we can see the branching is happening. So whenever you find the branching in the circuits, you can always write down that total current will be equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3 like that. All right. So always remember that it's a very important point. In that case, the voltage summation was same. And in this case, the current summation must be same. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so in the case of series combination, current remains same through the all the resistors. And in the case of parallel combination, current does not remain same through all the resistors. So what remains same here? So the quantity which is same is the potential difference. You see carefully, this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. So actually it is like the same battery is connected with the three resistors here. So this equal voltage will be going to everyone. In that case, it was a series combination. So equal voltage was not going. It was getting divided. But here, this entire, th all the three circuits, this one you take, or you take this one, or you take this one. They all are having a total voltage of V only because they all are connected with the same battery. In that case, it was not like this. All three together were connected to the same battery. Here, individually, they are connected to the same battery. So in the parallel combination, voltage remains same. Very, very important line. So do not forget in the series combination. Let me write down here. And what happens in the parallel combination? In the series combination, voltage not same. In the parallel combination, voltage is same. Current is same. In the parallel combination, current is not same through all the resistors which are connected in parallel. In series combination, V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Like it can be any number and numbers till Vn you can take V4, V5, V6. In parallel combination, current is equal to individual currents. So that's the important, that's the entire discussion about the and the comparison we have done about the series and parallel combination. Now let us begin with the parallel combination. Okay. And let's prove that if I want to replace the same thing again, if I want to replace this entire box with a single resistor, which is called the equivalent resistance of all the, of the entire circuit, that what would be that value? So here you can see it's the inverse ratio. One by RT is equal to RT stands for R total. 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 and so on, like that. Let us prove it. How is this possible? So let me take a circuit. R1, R3. And what is our target? We want to replace this thing with what? This circuit. So if battery is giving the current I, then through the battery, the current is going I. So in this case, what I can write is V is equal to I R total. And now we have to find out the value of IR total. Okay, let's see. So as I said before, if this current is I3, total current is I, then sum is going into two, sum current is going into one. 
there is a branching here so if three streets are available then now you have the choice few of the people will go from here some will go from here some of them will go from here so i is equal to what i1 plus i2 plus i3 let's apply the ohms law i we can write for v <coughs> from here i can write as v by r equivalent i1 what i can do for i1 so v is equal to i1 r1 v is equal to i2 r2 and v is equal to i3 r3 so i1 can be written as v over r1 i2 can be written as v over r2 and this can be written as v over r3 now v will get cancel out from every term so we will get 1 by r equivalent is equal to and so on if there are more number of resistors hence proof so this derivation have been asked in the cbse exams to derive the equivalent resistance of the entire circuit series and parallel combination okay so i hope now you guys are clear with this that what is our main target to derive the series and parallel combination formulas and now i am going to show you some important results here before i begin with the question part so these kind of questions i'll be dealing now so before i go to that let us learn few points related to the numerical part so first of all see in the series combination the current was same right so if current is same through all the resistors now v is equal to ir that's the ohms law so total voltage was v and total current uh, the current was same for all the circuits <laughs> sorry so if you want to see how much voltage is there for the first one how much voltage is there for the second one so what you have to do you can simply say that voltage is proportional to resistance in this case in the series combination that i am saying that current is same so if current is same then v is equal to ir so v is proportional to resistance so voltage will be divided in the ratio of resistance the resistor which is having more voltage it will be having more more uh, sorry the resistor which will be having more resistance it will be having more voltage as well and it should be also because uh, all the 100 charged particles have to cross so if a resistor is having high value it must have a high voltage as well so that it makes them to go smoothly with the same speed okay otherwise due to the higher resistance if the voltage remains same across all three then due to the higher resistance of third number few electrons may become slow down there right so that's why to maintain this the voltage is not same everywhere it is different across all the circuit so you should, must not forget it so voltage is proportional to resistance here you got my point okay so that's how the voltage will be getting divided so suppose if you want to find out the voltage across first one then you just need to take the in the ratio of resistance direct ratio of resistance so r1 across r1 it will be given by r1 plus r2 plus r3 multiplied total voltage so that's the total voltage we'll be getting across the one similarly for second one we can simply write r2 over r1 plus r2 plus r3 multiplied total voltage hence we can write for the third one also fourth one also. so in the direct ratio of uh, voltage we can write this uh, resistance we can write the total voltage in the case of parallel combination voltage is same so they will be asking you the question for the current so how is the current getting divided here so v is equal to ir now voltage is same so ir is constant which means i is inversely proportional to r so here the current the total current will be divided in the inverse ratio of resistance okay so if i have to divide the total current in the inverse ratio of resistance how i will say for the first one in the inverse ratio of resistance so i will be writing it like this and 1 by r3 
multiply with the total current. So total current have been divided in the inverse ratio of resistance. Similarly, to find out for two, you just need to replace this thing with two. One you replace with two. Similarly, to find out for three, replace I3 and R1 you replace with R3. So it's that simple. So in series combination, voltage is divided in the direct ratio of resistance. And in the parallel combination, the current is divided in the inverse ratio of resistance. Just remember this. Okay, I guess now the theory is clear to you guys for the series and parallel combination. And now we can begin with the few questions. So two, three numericals I'm going to discuss with you now. So we have to find out the current through the each and every resistor. So this is the 24 volt, so positive 24. And the current would flow like this. Okay, I have a very uh, simple method here. Through multiple approach, you can solve the problems, but uh, you can f see my approach as well. And if you feel like that I have come up with something better, you must do that only because ultimately you should be comfortable with every problem. So what I will do here, I will try to find out the total current first of all through the entire circuit. And I know how to do that because I will be replacing the entire circuit with a single resistor and I'll find out the total current. After finding the total current, I will distribute that current in both the circuits. And then that I know how to do it because it's a uh, 100 and 250. They are in series combination. Okay. Oh, sorry, parallel combination. So I can simply distribute the total current in those two in the inverse ratio of resistance. So if the calculations are very lengthy, I'll skip that part. So you guys can do that later on. Otherwise, we will do it till the end. So let's see the method and how to solve the questions. So total current I is coming this way. First of all, you must realize that this and this R1 and R2, they both are in the series combination. So if they both are in the series combination, what should I do? Uh, sorry, parallel combination. I can write down their equivalent resistance as one by 100 plus one by 250. We can take 1 by 50 common. So R prime, I'm taking the inverse. You must not forget to take the inverse because that's a common confusion I have seen among the students. They do the silly mistake and then they enter into the silly mistake club by not taking the inverse. So whatever they get from here, 1 by R prime, they write it as, as the answer. So total resistance, we have to take the inverse here in the parallel. So R prime will be how much? So I'm directly writing. Five hundred over seven ohm. Similarly for R double prime means so basically I can replace this R one and R two circuit with one resistor which is having a value five hundred and by seven ohm. Similarly, I can replace the second circuit. 1 by 350 plus 1 by 200. Again, it's a parallel combination, R3, R4. Common. Did I make any mistake here? Yeah. <clears throat> it's 1, 4, double, 0. Yeah, just check it if I'm doing anything wrong here in the calculation part. So 28 fives are is how much? It's 140. Okay. So yeah, 1400 by 11. That's the total resistance. So what I have understood from here is that I can replace this big circuit with this. This is 500 by 7 and the other one I can replace with 1400 by 11. So that's what I have understood. No confusion? Okay. So because I know how to replace the parallel combination and how to replace the series combination. I know that very well. Now this total resistance will be how much? Now these two are in series. R prime and R double prime. They both are in series. So if they both are in series, then what is the total resistance? Yeah, 
we must take their sum. So we, what we will be getting here is 100 I can take common. So 5 by 7 plus 14 by 11. lengthy calculations so now we are getting 153 divided by 77 ohm so which will give you 15300 divided by 77 ohm. just check if i have made any calculation mistake yes correct 15300 by 77 ohm okay now So that's a total equivalent resistance. So this means I can replace this big circuit with this. So finally, we have the total resistance here, which is giving you this much. So current is equal to how much? Total uh, V by R, so 24 over R, which is 5300 divided by 77. So now next part I'm leaving for you guys to solve. 15300. Oh. So in the exam, you might not get this much lengthy calculations. In the exam, you get a very simple numbers 10 ohm, 15 ohm, 20 ohm, and like that. Okay. So this was a question from some book. So that's why the calculations are a bit lengthy here. So that's how you find out the total current in the circuit. Okay, that's a current here actually, not the ohm. Ampere. So this much ampere we'll be getting the answer all right now this is a total current which we have got but this was not the question the question was something else current through all the resistors so what i do is that now this total current will be dividing among r1 and r2 no same current would pass through r1 and r2 r prime and r so r double prime because this is i now this current will get divided like this it will come back like this after completing the circuit and it will come out exactly in the same way. And again, it will get divided. Again, it will get divided and it will come out. So basically the total current through R prime and R double prime. This is R, R prime and this is R double prime. So total current through R prime and R double prime is same. So what will happen to this total current? Now it will be divided among in between them. So if I talk about a total current I here, which is the calculation I have done I, okay. Now I'm going to divide this among 100 and 200, 250. So what would I say for the first one? It's a parallel combination. So I must say that one by R1 divide by one by R1 plus one by R2 multiply the total current. Inverse ratio of resistance because they're in parallel. And what I would say for I2, 1 by R2 divided by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Multiply total current. Similarly, what you can say for R3, total current will be equal to 1 by R3 divided by, now it is having only two resistors in the parallel, 1 by R3 plus 1 by R4. Multiply total current. Similarly, for I4, 1 by R4 divided by 1 by R3 plus 1 by R4 multiplied with the total current. So total current was coming I, which is dividing among these two. Then it is combining and coming out again as I. And then it is again getting divided to these two and then coming out again as I. You must not forget that total current which have left through the battery would be same as the total current which will be entering through the battery. So that is the thumb rule. We must not forget it. It's always true. Whatever current battery will release, that same current would also enter through the battery. So that's how we'll do the calculations and that's how we find out the current across all the resistors. Now let us solve this problem. It looks very big circuit diagram, but believe me, it's very simple. So as soon as start, I start solving it, just like a puzzle. If you start solving it, you will start getting the answers soon. So let us see. Now you have to follow my steps. Okay. So look at the board for next two minutes. I'm going to solve it in next two minutes only. It's not a very big question. 
first of all you see r6 and r7 they are in series combination i can replace this thing with a single resistor whose value is 4 ohm so this is nothing but 2 plus 2 4 now you forget individual r6 and r7 forget about them you must think only about the one circuit now which is r4 uh, sorry 4 ohm all right now you don't need to think about it that what is there r6 and r7 now you have only one circuit which is uh, one resistor which is 4 ohm now this 4 ohm and this 4 ohm they both are in parallel combination so what i can do for that 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 which will be giving me 2 by 4 which is 1 by 2 so their total resistance r prime will be coming as 2 ohm means this entire thing which you can see here can be replaced with 2 ohm right because 2 plus 2 is 4 series and then 4 and 4 in parallel so that is in 2 ohm so now uh, i think it will become confusing for you so let me just draw the circuit it's 4 it's 10 ohm it's 4 okay we do have one Eight. Four, ten, four, eight, and yes, the rest part I have replaced with two ohm. Now you forget about the right part. Just look at the left circuit, because that is the equivalent circuit, the small circuit. Now this will become what? Twelve ohm. Right. This will become the twelve ohm, and at the same time I can say this is twelve ohm. Oops. series combination 12 ohm and at the same time you must realize that <clears throat> this is 4 plus 8 12 ohm because they both are in series so what will be the resultant circuit uh, let's draw it in the next board so 4 ohm this 4 plus 8 is not is nothing but 12 ohm also that 10 plus 2 is nothing but 12 ohm and now what is this 12 and 12 they are in parallel now the parallel of 12 and 12 1 by 12 plus 1 by 12 it's 1 by 6 so that would give you the 6 ohm this entire thing can be replaced with 6 ohm and that will become this Four plus six is how much? This will become ten ohm. Okay, so now what I am going to do is like basically I am going to replace with this circuit, and that would circuit would give me the total resistance as ten ohm. So this total is becoming four plus six, ten, and here this total battery which I have. Was five uh, volt as we could see in the question. So this is five volt, and now I can replace this four plus six as ten ohm. So this is four five volt. So what I can say V is equal to I R. Now five is equal to I multiplied ten. So I will be equal to five over ten, which is one by two ohm, ah uh, one by two ampere. That's it. so that's how we solve the questions keep replacing keep replacing keep becoming smaller and smaller right okay so that's the fundamental rule for the solving of circuit diagrams it's very simple it's very short and simple thing right and every time the j uh, cbs is asking a question from me yes j he has also asked the series combination question neat has also asked the series parallel combination questions so that's how we use them okay now let us go for the last question of the day for this circuit again it looks very scary but again believe me it's not very scary let us solve it from the end so that's my short trick like i always start from the end 
because from in the end i always uh, i have always observed that we start seeing them as a series parallel very easily so now here we can see <clears throat> this equivalent resistance between a and b they are asking so whenever you want to find out the equivalent resistance between a and b whenever you see such question what you do you just replace them by a battery first of all replace with the battery and now you solve the circuit you release a current i from here and now you solve the circuit that's a simple thing just a, a way of solving it otherwise you don't even need to do that so about a and b means what when you replace the entire circuit with about like if you want to find out the equivalent resistance of the circuit about a and b that is actually suggesting that we just have to connect a battery between a and b and uh, then we have to see what is the total resistance about it so this is 2 ohm this is 10 ohm that would give you 12 ohm so this is 12 ohm now this 12 ohm would be in parallel combination with this 6 ohm this 12 and 6 would be in parallel combination right if you're getting scared then let me just draw the last part of the circuit this is 6 this is 12 it was like that 10 plus 2 is 12 only so now what is the equivalent of these two right so 1 by 6 plus 1 by 12 let's find out the equivalent 1 by r prime that would give me 3 by 12 and from there i'll get r prime is equal to 4 ohm okay so this entire circuit This entire circuit is nothing but 4 ohm. Just check the calculations. Yes, it's 4 ohm. Once it has become 4 ohm, now you see this part, this, this circuit, starting from here, this and this. So it basically looks like this, 6 ohm, 8 ohm, and then the remaining part was how much? 4 ohm. Yes, and this is the remaining circuit. You will find that this 4 ohm and this 8 ohm are again in series combination. So once we say that this is in series combination, what will be getting? The 12 ohm. So now, this up till here, the circuit has become 12 ohm. So now let me replace it again. So this is R6, this one, 6 ohm, and the remaining one is the 12 ohm and R6 is 6 ohm. Now 6 and 12, again you will get the 4 ohm, right? So you don't even need to calculate it. So this part up till here, we are getting again 4 ohm. Now this 4 and this 4 is again becoming a series combination. So 8 ohm. So that would give me the 8 ohm. And this 8 ohm and this 8 ohm are again in parallel combination. So 1 by 8 plus 1 by 8 is 4. And that 4 ohm we will be getting from here is going to get in series with this. So that will give you 8 ohm again. 4 plus 4 is 8 ohm. And this 8 ohm is going to be again in parallel combination with this. So 8 plus 8 parallel is 4. 1 by 8 plus 1 by 4. 8, which is 4. And then ultimately, up till here we have got 4 ohm. This 6 ohm and this 4 ohm is going to make you the series combination. 6 plus 4 is total. 10 ohm so that's the equivalent resistance between both the uh, across the point a and b so guys i it this may look tough when you don't start once you start solving the circuit it becomes very very simple keep resolving keep resolving if you get stuck in the initial stages what you should do i would suggest you to draw the simpler simpler diagrams like uh, what i did in this case i just replaced the uh, last one as 10 plus 2 12 after that, I because I have an experience, because I have sold around 1,000 questions over it, then I saw that 12 and 6 would be in parallel. You, in the initial stage, don't do that. You What you do, you draw a new circuit diagram now, show 12 ohm there, show 6 ohm there, you would automatically say that it's in parallel combination. And once you see that in parallel combination, then replace that. Later on, you will see 12 plus 6 parallel is 4, and then 4 and this lowermost R7 which is 8 ohm, is coming in series. So keep replacing it and you'll get the answer.
so that's all guys that was all about the series and parallel combination so as i said in the beginning this chapter or this particular lecture was not only about the faculty it's about the student as well if you will practice around uh, 20 30 problems over this topic then only it will become perfection for you otherwise you will suffer a lot so if you want to if you do not want to fa face that situation i would suggest you to solve few problems from the module from the ncr textbook and from the dpps which we are providing you so that's all from my side and in case of any confusion just approach me or put it on the video so thank you so much that's all for today okay bye bye Thank you.